Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. This will be a quick overview of my new uh, Sibwalsi uh, S616 racket string machine. Um, there's not a lot of these videos out there on these smaller brands, so I decided, you know, why not? So I'm sure some people want to know about these things. And as a disclaimer, I am not paid or endorsed by any of these companies I will mention in this video. These are 100% my own unbiased opinions, so, you know, take it or leave it. You know, if I was paid by them, I will probably sugarcoat everything, you know, like some people. Uh, anyway, just as for some background information, so you know where I'm coming from. You know, I, I've used several machines in my life. You know, to me, these are great tools that I use to string my own machine, my own rackets, you know, for my friends, my students, and a lot of customers at a very fair price in my hometown. Uh, I live in Toronto, by the way. Um, so yeah, I started stringing. I first started with a Clipper Mate many years ago. It was an okay machine. I learned a lot. Um, I eventually switched to a Silent Partner string machine, which I actually bought for only $120 on Kijiji. Um, I, those, that was a great machine. I used it for a while and I decided to move on because it was two point mounting system. I decided to move on to a six point mounting system because I was getting a lot more customers at that point and I didn't want to risk, you know, breaking or snapping their rackets. So luckily that never really happened. Um, so yeah. So a few years ago, I started using a Pros Pros Challenger X. It's pretty much just a rebranded, you know, Alpha DC Pioneer plus and these Ignas and other smaller brands that are still popular today. A lot of people use it for badminton rackets and whatnot. Um, that, that machine was very good for me while it lasted. I mean, it, it, the, the problem is the base clamps. One of the base clamps, after about 100, 100 string drops, it kind of, I had to adjust it with the Allen key. You know, so every 10, 15 rackets, I would have to, you know, readjust it. And then eventually, after around 200 rackets on it, under under one year of use, after 200 rackets strung with that machine, that that base clamp totally failed. You know, so yeah, I, I was not impressed with that machine, so I will probably never buy that thing ever again. Even, like, I actually sold that machine off for only a hundred dollars on Kijiji. Um, somebody who has the same machine wanted the parts, so you know they they knew what they were doing, and and you know they were, both of us are happy. I mean. Uh, yes, I took a huge loss on it because I paid like what seven hundred, eight hundred dollars Canadian on it. Um, but you know, I already made that money back, and I'm, I ha and I made a huge profit off of it from string rackets, anyways. So, you know, it wasn't a big deal to sacrifice for for one hundred dollars. Um, but I do. I mean, I'm not saying that you know the Pros Bros. Uh, it's not a good machine. It's just if you're gonna do it for yourself and your friends, you know, and and learning your first machine, that's not a bad idea. Right, but if you're gonna crank out a lot of high volume rackets like me, you know it will break on you sooner than later. Okay, moving on. Um, my next machine that I started using was a uh, Penta Premium uh, 3600 with a wise engine head. It's an amazing machine. It's solid built, it's super workhorse. Um, I've done over 400 rackets on it. Has zero issues whatsoever. It might not be the prettiest machine to look at, but it gets the job done. You know, I look at it and I, I just think of it as a as a Honda Civic from 1990s or a Toyota Camry. Those things last a long time and super reliable. And um, yeah, if you guys want to see a video on that, I might make one in the future. Let me know in the comments. So back to the Sibuowski machine. Um, I was very skeptical at first because you know on these online forums, you know there are a lot of snobby people. You know they all have their opinions, and after all, they do make the same machine for for the lower level pros pro. Uh, machines so um, you know I, I didn't have a great experience with those but anyways I mean the price was very competitive compared to other you know rebranded string machines out there which I'm not gonna name um, so yeah uh, starting with the uh, turntable it's very solid the rails are a little bit thicker than the Penta machine it's about 11 millimeters deep um, and it's about 15 to 16 millimeters wide uh, don't quote me exactly because I just eyeballed it with the ruler um, the only thing I wish that this machine had was a, um, a locking or brake mechanism for a turntable. It's, it's nice to have it stabilized when you're trying to tie a knot, you know. But, you know, I've been doing this for a while. It's not a deal breaker for me. I can still manage without it. It's okay. Uh, moving on, the, the arm support does have a very modern look. A nice curvy and thick uh, shape. Um, kind of like the ones you see on a Dunlop or, or a head, um, you know, professional electronic machines. Um, the sidearm supports are symmetrical controlled um, using this knob out here, the outer knob. It is very smooth. Um, this machine comes with uh, load spreaders for badminton and tennis. Uh, originally they had a big curve to it. Uh, I actually grinded down my own because 
Um, the, the original curve works well with round frames like, you know, Babylon and, you know, um, Wilson, Wilson Clash and whatnot. But for rackets like uh, Wilson Pro Staff or Head Prestige, old school ones, um, they have a box beam shape. And I was afraid that this would have uneven pressure on it and, and I don't want to risk damaging any, any, anyone's racket, right? Um, I use that those rackets myself, so also it helps me, right? By grinding it down, it works automatically with any racket. Um, the base clamps are automatic gravity release, or with the press of the button here. The, the, the clamps itself, so far, so good. I don't know if it's diamond or carbon coated, but it does have a some sort of coating on it. It's like a very fine sandpaper grit. It's it's a little rough and you know high friction, so it doesn't slip. I mean, you can I don't know if you can see in the video here. I'm gonna try and zoom in. It's got a little copperish color to it. Yeah, so so far so good. No slippish, no slippage whatsoever. Uh, I will see how long they will last because eventually these things get rubbed off, right? Okay, now moving on to the crucial part. Uh, the motor itself, uh, surprisingly, I really liked it. It's it's very quiet compared to my Wise uh, tension head. It looks like it's the same motor as the Pro Pro's NT200. Um, but comparing this to tension uh, the, to the to the Wise tension head, it has a few more memory slots. You know, the, on on my Wise, there's only two memory slots. You know, so I, I store it as like I don't know, 55 and 60 maybe, 50 and 60 um, pounds. Um, this one has four slots, so you can have four memory of four tension memories here. You know, so it's very easy to skim through when you're when you're in a rush. Also, um, this machine has a, uh, a knot feature, a knot button, so it automatically pulls ten percent higher than your existing tension that you're working on. And uh, yeah, overall, I would say this is as good as a wise tension head, maybe a little bit better. And also, this machine is is very quiet. I will do a sound test right now and. Um, so you can take a look. Okay, now, so in conclusion, um, the Cebuasi, um S616 machine, it's it's a great machine for its price, and it looks good. It doesn't take too much space. I mean, I have a I have a baby while running around all the time, so I don't want him to to run over and hit and knock his head on this thing all the all the time. Um, the only drawback I would say is that the locking mechanism is uh, there, there's no there's no locking thing or brake for this turntable. Um, the clamps are functionally good. Um, but the metal finish, it is polished and it's smooth, but you can tell that underneath it was it was kind of done in, in a hasty manner. Um, but yeah, I just just an aesthetic thing. It's not a big, it's not a deal breaker. You know, some people do care, but yeah. So we well, see they do sell more expensive, a high level machine with a different motor. But for me, um, I, I don't want to spend too much money on it because you know the the, the more bulkier it is, the harder it is to ship, and you know because down the road this thing breaks. You know, if I'm going to send it back and, and get a fix, you know, it, it could be very costly. You know, as far as for my string business, you know, I only string about, you know, 400, 500 rackets a year. So f as a first machine, it's not a good, it's not a good business sense to blow it out on a Wilson Bayardo or a Babylon Star 5, you know, which will cost about like six to $10,000 to Canadian, right? If I did that, I would be in, in debt for a while and, and, and have to work my butt off to, to recover the cost back. Yes, it might be a good motivation to, 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 to string more rackets, but, you know, for, for me, I have other priorities. I don't want this kind of financial stress in my life. I, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, the, 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 the string job, the string job, the labor-wise, uh, the, the price hasn't changed over the years. But uh, meanwhile, the cost of strings have gone up, you know, thanks to inflation, you know, monopoly of the big brands. And all these smaller brands that, that come up now. Um, they eventually start raising their prices on the on the customers and, and to pay off their, you know, marketing expense and also to line their own pockets. You know, we all have to do what we have to do. 
Um, so yeah, you know, you can you can buy a machine yourself and start saving some money. It will pay off on its own. But if you do decide to do this as a side hustle, you know, consider something like this machine or or even a Penta 3600 or, or a Gamma machine. You know, you can buy a used. They're very cheap on, on the aftermarket, you know. So yeah, if, if you're going to start doing this, you know, do your math. Be realistic, you know, depending on your location, the market demand, how many compares you have. I mean, how many home stringers like me are there in your area or pro shops, right? You don't need a super expensive machine to be a good stringer. You know, I'm sure a veteran stringer can do a better job on a dropway machine than, than someone new at it with a, with a $10,000 machine. So, you know, don't have huge expectations when you, when you, when you, when you start doing this. You're not going to get a long lineup at your door overnight. You know, the, the, your customers, your clients, it takes time to build. And you got to price yourself strategically, you know, just slightly lower uh, than the market price when, you, when you're starting out. Because if you think about it, why would someone come to you when you're charging the same price as a professional, uh, you know, tennis shop where they haven't been doing this for many years, right? So you got to, you have to give them some sort of, give the customer some sort of incentive or motivate them to come to you and, 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 and use your service, right? So you just got to uh, start small, baby steps, you know, adapt and be smart with your money and play your cards right, right? And the growth will eventually come. And then after that, once you make some good amount of money off of it, then you can maybe invest in a, a better machine, right? So... That's pretty much all I have to say for this video. I hope you liked it or find it somewhat useful. If you have any questions related to tennis, you know, rackets or, or strings or even coaching, I'll, I'll try my best to answer it. You know, I do work as an instructor in the summertime here in Canada. It's been more than a decade now, so I know a thing or two about this industry. Um, you know, feel free to discuss your string journey and what kind of machine you use, right? Or something that I should look into in the future because, you know, sooner or later, I'm probably going to buy another machine in a year or two. You know, so you never know. I will be posting more tennis related content as the weather gets better here in Canada. So, yeah, feel free to like and subscribe if you're interested. All right, thanks for watching. Bye bye.